All right. Let's go over one thing here, and then we're ready to go. All right, folks, thanks for being here. What's that? Font's kind of small? Okay. Um, is that good? Lost my... Hold on. Does that look okay? Okay, wonderful. Okay. Alright guys, this is a, um, this is a presentation on object-oriented programming in Drupal 6. Um, just want to give you a little forewarning. Um, most of this this talk and, and the module that I'm going to be presenting is not necessarily intended um, for production use. This is more of just a somewhat of just a, a, a I, I would view this more of a just a fun educational entertaining talk more than I mean I wouldn't necessarily expect to, to use this on your your clients production boxes, um, but that's that's up to you. So um, I, I would just view this like I said more of just a kind of interesting experience in um, seeing what Drupal can do or what can, uh, you know, what can be done with it. Um, basically, uh, oh, let me open up the slideshow here. Every presentation I have, I have a separate image of my dog. So, this is my dog, Tegan. I couldn't find anything else to put on the front page here, so that's it. She's the Jack Russell Terrier. Um, don't ask. Anyways, here's what we're going to cover today. First, we're going to talk about what is it. Then we're going to talk about where is, and by it I mean uh, this module that I'm presenting. It's called Drupal. Kind of lame, but. <laughs> um, second, we're going to be talking about where is Drupal and object-oriented programming. Why? Why did I build this module? performance, which is the main concern, and, and where are we going to go from there. Um, so before we get into any of this, I actually would like to do, um, I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try. I'd actually like to do a demonstration. I'd like to start with a demonstration using some volunteers. Um, I need three volunteers, actually. Okay. <laughs> First volunteer I need is I need someone that can just simply install a, uh, or they can actually write a module. I'm not going to ask you to write a big module, but I need you to just write on the fly a Drupal 6 module. Can anyone here do that? If not, then I'll have to not go with it. No one can do that here? No? Can you? You want to try it? Okay. You guys will understand. Don't worry. It'll, it'll make sense. And then secondly, I need another person that can write a module, um, but maybe that might have to be the same person. And then thirdly, I need someone that can install a module. Um, a little unorthodox, but, but you'll see why I'm attempting to do that. So, um, you want to give it a shot, my friend? Well, come up here. Yeah, you got to come up here. This is this is integral to the presentation because. This, yes. You don't have to. If you don't want it. It can be a two two function module, that's it. What's your text editor of choice? Can you use this? No, I don't have that. <laughs> Alright. I got text wrangler, will that work? Alright. You write the module and then I'll uh, 
You don't even have to install it. I'll install it in one. Can we try that? Sure. This man can do it. I know this guy. Alright. Just do a Hello World module. How about that? With a, a menu hook. How about that? Something like that. Sorry, no autocomplete. <laughs> It was back, you know, in the cowboy days here. Yeah. I use that. Does anyone use the uh, text link um, functions that come from uh, Blake and Blake with the other? Quite handy. Okay, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll, I'll write, I don't even know if I know how to, but I'll try to write a module here. Okay. Collectively, and this has a purpose, I promise. Um, first, we need an array, right? Is that correct? Yeah? And then let's assign, uh, let's assign a path called. Um, yep, certainly. And. No, I cannot. Protect anyone? Oh, man. Sorry about that, guys. I'm working on it. You know what? Better idea. So we're right here. Um, we're at right, module. We'll call this module, we'll call it test. That's great, right? And then we'll just have one hook in here for now. Yes, you, you're right. Um, what arguments do we need here? We need... What else? Pick, uh, Oh yeah, no hash. You know what, I could just pull the test module, but there's a purpose for doing this. Spare with me here. Um, you know what, we're not going to do this. We're going to go a quicker route. I'll show you one I already made, how about that? We'll save some time. <laughs> All right. Here we go. demonstration, I promise. There we go. <coughs> Alright, we're going to install this module. 
The reason I didn't install it ahead of time is because I wanted to demonstrate to you guys how the process works. Here's what we're going to do. Fresh Drupal installation. I'm going to log in. I'm going to go to the module section. You know what? We may as well just demonstrate it right now. That's what we're going to do. It takes a while, it has to do some stuff. What's that? I will explain that. Here we go. Here's what I've provided. We have the core Drupal module here. Well, I shouldn't call it Drupal. I'll call it Drupal, Drupal Object Oriented Program. That's what it really is. Um, Drupal Loop, how about that? We'll call it that. And then we have a demonstration module here. Um, first, we're going to look at the demonstration module before I run that. I volunteered then didn't work out so well. But we can still look here. Yeah. Here's what this module looks like. I'm going to start this by example. Instead of just spending a lot of time explaining it, I may as well just show you guys. Um, this is a class with a number of um, public static methods in it. 
These can be protected. Um, they must all be static though as well. This is a, a theme hook. This is a node API hook. This is a theme callback function. This is a menu hook. Um, essentially the process by which this module is developed is it's simply, you, you, it's, it's just the, whatever you would consider to be the traditional object-oriented approach to building the module. So nothing here is really non-intuitive. It should all, the way that you would initially think that you would port a module to this is kind of the way it would happen. So what we're going to do here is we're going to test this out. Um, this is just a, a simple module. There's no, there was no special installation required for this module. What we're going to do is we're going to test this module out uh, by going here. And there it is. That's the module loading right there. Um, what you're seeing right here. A few things I want to point out here. Um, you take the name of you take the name of the module, which in this case is Drupal Demo uh, of, uh, OOP, and then you just turn it into Camel Case and you prepend it with the word mod, and then um, you take the you take the module name away from you take it off of the prefix of, of each method, and then each of these should be a public static method. Um, so what we have going here is we have a menu callback for this page right here, as you can see there. And then that is calling, um, for the page callback, you can see that it's calling the show help method, which is right here. Now, we're also calling some core, um, some core functionality here. You'll recognize this right here is the equivalent of user load. Um, and that's something that's auto-generated. And then you'll recognize this right here, lib path, Drupal get title. That would be the Drupal get title um, method as well. So it's now namespaced within that. Um, we can do some other stuff too, such as, um, let's look at all the, um, Let's look at all the class methods of, of the node module. Mind you, this will work with uh, any module. It's not just core modules. You can, you can do this with any module. But let's look at all the class methods of node module. Uh, yes. You know what? I'll just increase my resolution. How about that? That better? No, not better. Okay, it's not better. Um, all right, we will try to increase the font size on here. Oh man, scared territory. Do you know where font is in Eclipse? Where's the font? This one is the font. Change. 14. What about that? Should we try that? 18. How's that? Better? Wonderful. So. Um, mod node. That's just the auto-generated name for. Um, that's just the auto-generated name for the node module. And again, that would work for anything. If your module was called test something, then it would be called mod test something. Let's try this out. You know, let's uh, let's make that look a little nicer. How about that? And here you are. You have the listing of all the methods within the node module. 
Um, you're not going to see um, you're not going to see protected methods though. Um, protected methods in Drupal by convention would be anything that's prepended with an underscore. So you can see um, no teaser, no get types, you know, no uh, type save. You may recognize all these methods. These are all accessible um, statically through any module. So um, as well as so, so what this module is basically doing is it's giving you that access to any other module or or even include files as well and it's also allowing the system to access your own hooks uh, using object-oriented structures. That's the demonstration that I was trying to show you guys. Um, anytime, anytime, you need to, anytime you need to regenerate, like say you add a new module, you simply go to the performance section, and then you rebuild the cache, clear cache data right there. I'm not gonna do it right now. But you simply do that, and then it will um, it will regenerate all the links. Uh, it will regenerate the structures so that everything is accessible, um, both to core files and from core files as well. That's that. I want to give you guys a frame frame of reference. So that's essentially what we're doing here. It's it's a two way operation. Um, you can access all the core files. Your own modules can be accessed. Um, I think that this, this discussion, it, it's, it's appropriate for me to go, to basically go over where Drupal is right now with object-oriented programming. Um, right here I put that it, it uses object-oriented programming through convention, and what that means, to, I mean, this is somewhat subjective, but um, it is true, and, and I provide a link here, which is a, a good uh, document to read. It's, it's written kind of outlines where Drupal's at with object-oriented programming. I'm not gonna go over what all that says, but basically, Drupal doesn't enforce, it doesn't enforce like a PHP-based syntactic enforcement of object-oriented concepts, but it's more, it's through convention. There's a, there's a, there's a set of, of rules that are almost, it's, it's understood and it's agreed that the developer's gonna follow those, and, and in a way, Drupal has implemented a, a, a certain degree of object-oriented programming using that. Um, in a way, it's, it's kind of, I guess it could also be referred to as aspect-oriented programming, in a sense, not completely. Um, the main tenets of, of object-oriented programming, ab abstraction, encapsulation, polymorphism, and inheritance. Again, those are, those are enforced by conventional structures within the Drupal framework and not with the PHP language. So what I'm saying is, it's not as though we don't have this uh, within Drupal. Um, however, there are some people, and then we get into the next uh, the next section of this. There are some people who who desire to have that who de who desire to have the object oriented structures enforced at the language level and not at the framework level. Um, that's not something that everyone desires. It's kind of an apple and apples and oranges things thing, but um, sometimes that is necessary for some people. Um, and that brings me to this, which is why. Um, I said here because Java, Python, C Sharp developers are people too. Um, one of the problems I notice in my day to day uh, work is is it's hard it's hard to explain to a Java guy or a Python guy or a C Sharp guy. It's hard to to sit down with them and say, no, you don't understand. Drupal does have object oriented structures. You just have to kind of see it a certain way, and, and to them, that doesn't really make sense. So my primary thing was, is I wanted a way to attract people from that world, from that from that train of thought, and, and to kind of give them somewhat of an intermediate step to show like, to kind of take that a step further, because I've had a lot of conversations, especially with Java guys, and, and I'll try to explain to them like, no, you know, Drupal uh, implements abstraction and, and encapsulation using its own kind of internal methods that they put together. And sometimes I'm met with blank stares on that. And so now I'm thinking, you know what? That doesn't need to happen. Um, so, the, and even then my target audience, people that I, I would hope and, and would assume would be most interested in something like this would be people from this world. 
um, probably more so than PHP developers. Second thing is that namespaces can be a good thing. Um, they're not always a good thing, but they can be. Helps you organize your thoughts. Sometimes if you're like, if, if you're if you're trying to remember like, okay, I mean, I don't know, how many, how many functions are in the Drupal core? I mean, API functions, there's gotta be, I don't know, maybe five, at least 500, I don't know, maybe 1,000. Sometimes it's hard to remember where those can be, but if you've broken down, if you've broken down every module and every include into systematic pieces, and, and you have those pieces and you know what they are, you can you can see what's available within those. Um, again, that's not something everyone would wish to have, but it, it certainly can help you arrange your thoughts. Um, thirdly, again, I mean, this is, like I said, this is not a um, something I'm necessarily recommending for production. It's more just a fun project. It's something that, for me, allowed me to kind of explore Drupal more and, and understand it more. Um, and I would hope that if anyone ever was to use this module, that, that above all else, it would be something that they would just, you know, that would be an enjoyable thing. Um, it's it's new and it's a little different. Uh, I'm gonna get into performance. Try not to take too long here. I mean, I'm I, I'm trying to let the module project kind of speak for itself and show you what it's doing. I, I don't feel like there's a lot I need to say, but performance. Um, on my tests, on average, I was seeing a 1.44% performance hit on CPU performance um, on on actual on actual clock counts and a 2.18 memory hit. Um, I know that that should be considered a big deal. Um, and again, this is why I'm not recommending that you go and put this out on your, um, you know, that like Warner Brothers or or someone like that put this out on their site. Um, I haven't totally worked out those problems yet. Um, I, I initially I initially implemented this module um, using entirely as a module, and it was more about a five or six performance hit and a seven or eight memory hit. I then proceeded to I know some people aren't going to like this, but I then uh, had to move a lot of the module into core code, unfortunately. Um, and that brought down the performance hit and the memory hit significantly. This module is available though. I do I do have it available as a non uh, as a module that does not modify core. But for performance sake, I wanted to demonstrate the one that did. Um, and I'm not a Drupal performance expert, but like I said here, it doesn't mean it's going to be your bottleneck. Um, a lot of times your bottleneck will be poor database strategy, poor caching strategy, um, poor string handling. You have too many regular expression functions in, in your modules, and I mean, you know, eight or nine uh, preg replaces is, is going to probably give you more than a, a two or three or four percent memory hit over what it would have been. So I mean, there's other bottlenecks here as well. So I can't necessarily say that this is always going to be your bottleneck, but it's something to be considered. Yeah. taken it that far to the point that you can, oh by the way, his question was, he's asking the extent, like, the extent of what the module will do in terms of, I'm, I'm assuming, inheritance. Um, for example, yeah, such as, in Drupal you have, you have an object called, you have a node object. Now, the node object is not, like, it's not represented as an actual PHP object. Um, by default, there's no node class. So the node object is almost a um, 
somewhat of like a virtual object that's created on the fly. You can, for instance, well, you know what, I'll, I'll partially answer your question by demonstrating rather than talking about it. Um, I'll show you what you can do and what you can't do. You can do this with any 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 structure on within Drupal though. You can extend it. Um, you do something like that, and then let's come down here. What's an object of note? Uh, a method of note? Load. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Let's do this. I don't know if I have any nodes on this system, but you'll still, I'll, I'll show you what's going on here. Are you guys following what's going on right now? We're extending it, we're subclassing it, and then we're going to do something like that. Now, we don't actually have any nodes on this system, but I can actually create one. And then uh, let's try that. So I'm going to show you what we can do, and then I'll get to what we can't do in regards to your question. Essentially, you can. You, you can extend anything that's represented as a core module or a core include, but for instance, you cannot extend like a CCK type or something like that. Yeah, sorry. I guess it would have taken longer to demonstrate, but. Yes. I could make a node module in the old way. I could learn that. Uh, it sounds like that. Yes, yes. Um, the way I'm, the way that yes, used used to is is implementing most things as objects. Although it's a little different in that it's returning it's returning a non-static view object. Um, so it's I actually had made some attempts to integrate this to make sure that this integrated well with views too. I'd say it's maybe halfway there. There's some things that are a little quirky with it, but um, one thing I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to um, write views. I wanted to be able to write a module that could subclass um, a views class. Um, again, that's a very specific need. People may not always want to do something like that. Um, that's something that I'm hoping to get working eventually. Um, at the moment, I haven't completely figured it out, but I'm working on some ideas with that. Um, does that answer your question? Okay. Where I want to take this, um, I want to improve performance. Um, I want to think of ways of not having to modify the core while improving performance. Um, again, it should be mentioned that the uninstall and the install on this will completely restore all your files and there's no interruption um, that I've found to, to the standard, uh, standard API functions within Drupal. You know the core is modified, I took great care to make sure that didn't happen. And to, along this gentleman's question, um, I want to improve the class method and property detection so that eventually things like CCK content types, which are even more abstract, things like that can be um, can be extended and inherited and things like that. That's basically where we're at. Um, and there's one more thing I want to show you. This is the standard Drupal version of this module. 
It's the exact same module. All the same stuff here. Port it over to this. Um, I wanted to give that comparison so that I think the biggest problem with a project like this is people are going to wonder about performance and then they're going to wonder like how hard is this to implement? So I wanted to show people and I wanted to give examples of it's the way that you would think it in your brain is probably the way it's going to work. It's, it's completely, or I tried to make it as intuitive as possible. Um, and again, to demonstrate a safe uninstall, First, we're going to disable it, which, and by disabling it, that will not restore your core files, but it will disable the functionality. And then we're going to uninstall it. And your system is back to exactly again where it was. Um, all the core files have been restored. That's all I have in terms of demonstration and, and, and presentation. Um, if anyone has any questions about it, love to answer them. If not, then uh, no problems. Yeah? So another question on inheritance. Yeah. Yes, you can. And that was a big thing. That was a big thing. We big reason why I want to do this. Um, normally, if you're going to call, say, five minutes, okay. Normally, if you're going to call node load, um, then you're going to want to go into your load hooks and do various things with it. Uh, that works many times, but then there's sometimes where that's not going to do what you want. Um, again, this is this is all hypothetical and experimental, but. But yeah, you can write um, you can write a class that will inherit node, and then you can call that class, and that would be present you with your new node object, and it would work exactly as normal. Does that answer your question? That's up to you. Your, your, your modified modules can, or they don't have to. Um, essentially, you're just you're just calling a new node object. Um, I think my first example using node load was probably not relevant to your question per se. So, barring that, yeah, you can write a class that will inherit node. It'll inherit all the properties and methods of node. And then you can do with that class what you want. Um, the the con the concept of polymorphism would come into play there, and um, you know you might want to override certain methods and things like that. I haven't thoroughly tested overriding um, certain protected methods, so I can't guarantee that that's going to work right now. But that would definitely be something I would work on. Any other questions? All right, well, um, that concludes that. If you guys are interested, the website is um, uh, drupal.org slash project slash D-R-O-O-P-A-L. And of course, you can ask me any questions after the talk if, uh, if, uh, if you have any. And my name is Brendan, and that's it. Thank you.